Hi guys, uh, this is Tom and uh, I'm working on my uh, EV here today and I'm going to assemble the uh, motor assembly with all its adapter plates. So we'll go through each and everything. Um, I'll show you what I got here. Uh, I got all my tools laid out, I got my torque wrench, I got some screwdrivers in case I need to pry on some stuff. Um, I got all my bolts laid out. These two dowels are for the assembly here. I got all my screws. I'll be using socket head cap screws on the adapter, which that's what that looks like right there. That's a socket head cap screw. These happen to be stainless steels. Stainless steel. The uh, black oxide ones will work just fine, but they had a bunch of these at the uh, shop, and uh, so we uh, we just went ahead and used those. I, I got my sockets laid out. Uh, these are the uh, the flywheel bolts. I've got them all cleaned up. Hopefully you can see that really well. Um, the threads are really clean and uh, they were a little burgered on the end and uh, I refaced them on the uh, snag grinder. Here's our clutch bolt. Same type of bolt and uh, they're all clean as well. Here's our split taper bushing. Here's our flywheel adapter. Um, here's a little bit of Loctite I'm going to use on the dowels only. I'm not a fan of anything between my bolt and a thread. Uh, you may feel different and that's fine. I'm very old school when it comes to that. So I will not use any Loctite on the threads. Over here I got my flywheel that I had um, resurfaced the clutch is balanced with the clutch plate is the pressure plate is balanced with the flywheel it is 0.6 grams and that's pretty tight um, you can see I got my pilot bearing but uh, pressed in there and you can see how on a Honda it it uh, does not go in flush on the back side so we had to uh, cut a relief into our our bushing here and uh, and that's why that's there that's to allow the uh, protrusion of the uh, pilot bearing so uh, this is a remanufactured clutch um, this may be completely inadequate for for our motor I don't know but I'm going to start with this clutch if I have to buy a stiffer clutch later on down the road that's not an issue I'd rather uh, we'll start there because you know um, the reason for that is is the clutch is a pretty easy replacement um, I don't know um, how all this is going to react with the uh, 121 foot-pounds of torque that we can get out of this motor which is more than the factory engine that we took out of the Honda so my my thought process is um, I'll let the clutch give up before I break an axle or something like that. Um, I'd rather I'd rather the clutch give up first. So we'll try this. If it works, it works. If not, then we'll go to a stage one or a stage two clutch, something a little heavier duty. Um, brand new, uh, brand new clutch disc. We got our tool. Um, I got uh, some deburring tools there. I got a file and a and a burr knife and a stone. Um, I'll use the file on all the mating surfaces of the aluminum to make sure we don't have any burrs because aluminum is, you know, as you know, is very soft and, you know, handling these pieces, bumping them or whatever, you can create a burr. So I'll file everything on the mating surfaces before I put it together and then the stone is for the steel parts. Um, you know, we'll stone, we'll stone these surfaces uh, that made up with the flywheel and make sure we have absolutely no burrs. We don't want anything in our machined surfaces. So I think that about covers it. Uh, this could get windy um, and maybe perhaps pretty boring but uh, let me get you on the stand and we'll start our assembly. Okay so the first step is we're going to put the keyway into the uh, shaft here. I'm going to take my little hammer and tap her down. 
make sure we got it on there good and then I'm going to show you this this is a split taper bushing okay this is the back side I don't know if you can see it or not this I bought this at Granger it is a P1 and it's an inch and an eighth diameter so what we did was we drilled a couple holes and tapped them here actually there's three of them these other holes don't mean anything they were already in the part when we got it it, ha it is split as you can see it's got uh, a split two splits uh, 180 degrees to each other and this is a taper here um, trying to get it in the camera so maybe you can see it maybe you can't but it is tapered from about here where my little finger is well call it the um, call it the uh, it's tapered from the the split is sawed about well I'm just having all kinds of trouble here seeing this there you go you can see the split right there and about where the split ends up here near the shoulder is where the taper starts and goes all the way down it's a standard taper it's which is three quarters of an inch per foot all right our adapter here has the same three quarter inch taper bore in it and then we have the three screw holes that will pull it up onto the bushing so we'll get this on here um, I kind of wish the key was a little bit um, a little bit uh, longer but it'll be alright see if we can get it to start this this goes together pretty darn good um, you need a puller to take it apart um, and I'm going to make a different um, I'm going to make a little gizmo for the front. It'll make it a lot easier to pull off uh, at this time. It's a little bit harder to pull off than you might imagine. So I'm just going to use a soft hammer here and pound this on. that's the bottom now the key the key is what's making it really tight guys so I just want to make sure that we got that seated up against the shoulder there's a shoulder on the shaft and uh, we just want to make sure we got that seated up there which we do <clears throat> I'm give it a couple shots that feels good and sounds good to me so we're up against that it does have a set screw here in the back and I'm just going to snug that down slightly I'm not going to put any real pressure on it and what that's going to do is hopefully keep the bushing from pulling off the shaft a little bit as we tighten up the uh, the adapter for the flywheel so I got three screws here these are 5 16 18 the adapter there's no key on the taper um, we could have put a key in there um, right there's a slot for it but I really don't think we're going to need it I'm pretty positive we're not going to need it um, we got the bolts to help, help us that have to shear the bolts um, and uh, I don't think we're going to have any kind of a situation here of the ones I've seen uh, I've seen motors with more power 
online with the same type of, of coupling and they didn't have a key so um, that would have been a bit of a bear to put that keyway in there uh, it could be done but everything is on the taper so we're going to go ahead and do it uh, without a key I don't think it's going to be an issue so I'm going to wipe everything down here on the inside make sure we have no dirt dust or anything else on the uh, part itself and then we're going to slide this on here I'm going to put the screws in it so I can kind of line it up because once you get this thing on the taper it you it, it just sticks I mean the gripping power here is just unbelievable um, which is why one of the reasons I, I opted to go with this um, you know we're actually we're actually pulling down and compressing that bushing against the shaft and it is um, just super 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 tight when you do that so I'm going to go around here and I'm going to just barely snug on these as it pulls up on that taper and I don't know if you can I don't know how well you can see but I can see the I can see the part I can see this gap closing here between the end of the um, of the uh, bushing and the face here now a taper is not a a very good way to locate things so we're going to run an indicator on this and make sure that we got a nice situation here for our flywheel we don't want it to be wobbling so I'll put an indicator against this as I get it tight if I need to I can I can move it just a little bit I can bump it on one end or the other and uh, and get it where I want it I'm just slowly snugging these down and they're, every time I get on one it's a little loose and I can turn it just a little bit and it's starting to it's starting to come to the end and it's starting to to get harder to uh, turn as it pulls up on the taper and when we started we had a really sizable gap in here and just see if I can get you guys run in there a little bit this gap here was you know twice as big um, and as you can see we're pulling down and as we pull it down we are squeezing the crap out of that split bushing onto that shaft So we have a tremendous amount of force being applied to the shaft, even though these bolts are, you know, not very, I wouldn't say that we are, you know, as you can see, I'm not bearing down on it or anything like that.
So I just uh, keep on going here. until they quit turning in you know I just turn these just a little bit and then the others every time I turn the next one it's a little loose so it's not quite seated up there now it's starting to it's starting to get tight now so And I guarantee you, you'll play hell getting this off or anything, you know. And again, we don't, the set screw I set back here was just a little bit and I barely put any on it. I don't want to mark the shaft up. And the only reason I did is because as you tighten these down, it, it tends to want to pull the bushing off the shoulder. And I want the bushing against the shoulder as much as possible. If it comes off a little bit, that's okay. I just keep going around. until I feel like I'm applying about the same amount of torque on each one and it's tight okay guys I got the uh, indicator against the surface that I want to be as good as I can get so let's give her a spin around and see where we're at I'm not going to worry about zeroing it hopefully you guys can see that it's about one it's about one thousand there maybe just a little less it's not too bad so right in here is the highest point so I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this screw a little bit Now let's put that back against there. This is a heck of a rigging I got going on here for this indicator. If I can hold everything still here. The motor's rocking a little. I'm going to say I helped it a little bit.
you can see that it looks like we're about seven or eight tenths right now this screw here I'm going to I'm going to loosen this one and retighten it now let's see what we get and hold it still about one actually made it a little worse If I have to, I can always bump it. I tell you, we're pretty close to being within half a thousandths. I'm thinking that's pretty darn good. I'm going to make sure these are tight, which I'm pretty sure they are. Give it another check. I stoned that surface a little bit. Nice. That's pretty yeah, that's pretty darn good for with the gear I got to check it with. Oh yeah. I'm down with that guys. So hopefully you got to see that. Um, I'm gonna call it within a half a thousandths and uh, that's I'm just gonna take a file here and give it a rub. Make sure we don't have any burrs sticking up anywhere. Make sure it's clean as I can get it. As far as having material. 
running around on it here. Set that right in there. Get my motor up here. Get it hanging over the edge there a little bit. action. Now the reason I made the spacer is because <clears throat> I didn't I didn't want to use one great big thick piece of aluminum. We really don't need it for strength. So I made a spacer to save material and we actually cut the cost of the material down by almost 30 percent by using the spacer and we probably saved a little bit of machine time as well so the way this goes on I believe that is where it goes the dowel pins need to be locate in the right proper location here and Let's see. That's it. And we got a dowel up there and a dowel over there. Okay. So that's it. Lay this back down. And I'm turning this slightly. I just trying to feel if I have any dirt behind it. I don't. It's really smooth. And we'll go ahead and run the screws in. These are 3 8 16 screws, which is the what the motor comes, the threads in the motor, that's what they are from the factory, from HPEVS. These don't have to be super, super tight, but tight, you know. Basically, I'll get them as about as tight as I can get them with this short little wrench. The hard part's done now, so, which is indicating that piece in, make sure we're running pretty good. You know, I'd like to see the flywheel within three thousandths on its outer edge. We'll see if we'll check it when we get it all put together and see if that's what it is. Three or four thousandths, I think it'd be okay. That may be overkill, I don't know. I don't want it flopping on there though. If it's only out the width of your hair that's in your head, then uh, that's good enough for government work, I think. All right, so the next step, the next step will be to put the uh, adapter plate itself on. As you can see, we have a machine surface here right here, which goes against the spacer. This diameter is a little bigger than the spacer, so, and it will go on here just like this. Let me back you guys up here a little bit. This is probably one of the most boring videos. Alright. 
we'll make sure we're pretty clean. I'm going to take and put, uh, let's see, it goes on here like this, pretty sure. Yep. Get one started here. There we go. All my bolts are the threads and the bolts here go nearly the full length of the thickness of the pieces. We want all the threads we can possibly get since it's aluminum. Get them. I'll run them all in, and then uh, back them off a half a turn, and we'll put the dowels in. All right, so our dowels ought to be lined up, and they are. Oh yeah, so I'm going to put just a little bit of Loctite on my uh, dowel pins. Just because I don't, they are fairly loose. We reamed the holes uh, oversized, a thousand. So we, these are 3 8 dowels, we use a 376 reamer and uh, they are a nice slip fit but no um, there's really not any um, drag at all and that's all the way in so I don't want the dowel pin to walk out against the uh, flywheel which is why I'm putting a little of this on here and maybe we were we probably would have been all right with uh, an on-size reamer, but I really didn't uh, want to take a chance. So this is what we ended up with, and that's it. Now these dowels help us with location. But, um, and it's maybe overbuilt a little bit, but I was thinking about shear as well. So, but I doubt you could, uh, I doubt very seriously we have the power to shear these socket head cap screws. But it will definitely uh, keep them from squirming. Uh, you know, we won't have any squirm at all. 
with the dial pins. And you see the uh, transmission dowels are already in. Tighten them up. Again, this should be the uh, final assembly all the way out to the clutch here. Hopefully, I won't be taking this off. And uh, if I have to pull that flywheel adapter off, I will make me a uh, proper puller for it. Instead of trying to wrestle it off there like I did before. Alright, now. Now we're ready for the flywheel. So, already stoned that surface. The flywheel recesses in just a little bit. Let's see. The dimension on the internal combustion engine. The flywheel mounting surface here was 60 thousandths short of the block and this piece simulates the engine block right here okay and actually all these contours and things around it are taken directly off the engine block the only exception is is that this would have been cut off right across here and that would uh, and then there would be an inspection plate underneath you know so actually this we, we've gone ahead and put this on here to seal up the entire um, bell housing but sixty thousandths was our dimension and uh, that's kind of a critical dimension I guess but you know not super critical I don't but uh, just scaling it here with a scale it's uh, it's dead on dead on a sixteenth of an inch so we've nailed that and uh, there'll be no issues at all I'm sure with the position of the clutch in uh, on the, on the shaft of the transmission it'll be in perfect position perfect factory position um, in and out so that was the uh, one of the important goals um, and that's the critical dimension when you build something like this you got to be able to mimic the position of the flywheel and clutch assembly or if it's an automatic the, the, the flex plate and whatever else you got involved there the torque converter uh, you have to be able to mimic that in in the uh, and get it in the right position so we've achieved that now I just want to make sure that's clean and the next thing we're going to do is hang the flywheel Our flywheel is beautifully machined by a local shop. They do excellent work and uh, super glad that I have found these guys because uh, they've, done, they've done some other work for me too here in the recent past. So let me get a screw. Let me sit down here. Hopefully you guys are in the picture. 
and we'll hang this flywheel on here. Get the holes lined up. It's a uh, it's a very very good slip fit that we have right there. The tolerances were held pretty tight and uh, it's actually kind of hard to get the flywheel on there perfect but when it goes you can feel it. So we'll run these in there. Okay so uh, with the help of my wife we got this torque we got the flywheel torqued down 87 foot pounds and uh, I got the indicator up here and uh, we'll give her a spin and you can see it's within about five that's a little it's a little more than I wanted but I think it's going to be okay of course that's you know the farther out we go the higher amplification we get down here at our shaft you know it's going to be within about a half a thousandth I think or even closer probably um, you know will we will we generate a vibration um, I don't know but uh, if we do we'll uh, we'll address it but I think it's going to be okay oh I don't know if you guys can see that or not Let's see if you can see the indicator So, it's within about five. Okay, so I got my indicator a little closer in, and it's running about three. So, I think we'll be okay. Who knows what, <clears throat> you know, a factory flywheel is when it's on an engine all put together. Um, you know, I'm sure they're not out very much, but um, we'll give this a shot and see how it goes. See if we get any vibration from it. But, um, yeah, we'll just see. The only thing we can do. Um, so now we'll continue on, put the clutch on it, and uh, we'll be done. Alright, so we'll put the clutch on next. Make sure that uh, our surfaces here are clean, don't, don't have anything on them, which it's pretty darn clean. Oh, yeah, I love just spinning it. So we get our clutch here with our alignment tool making sure that uh, we have the proper side and this says flywheel side on this side so it goes against the flywheel there we go now we need to mate our balanced pressure plate Make sure we're in there. We got A, A and B. Pin stick up so so much it's hard to get it. I'm gonna pull 
this up. There we go, maybe. Nineteen foot pounds on the clutch bolts. All right, so now I got my clutch on there, and uh, I'm gonna tighten it up. We'll go around here. Give it a few cranks each time. Sneak up on it. All right, now we'll torque it down. 19 foot pounds. I've already got my wrench adjusted, ready to go. Start here at the top. There we go. I'll just go around and check and make sure. And there we go. That's it. She's ready to go in the car. Now if we just had the car ready. So, <clears throat> I hope this wasn't extremely boring. I think, uh, I think we're going to be in excellent shape here. And, uh, yeah. I think we got a nice piece of uh, a nice piece of engineering here on here, and I think uh, it's going to work just the way I want it. 
So again, I want to thank everybody who was involved with this. Is that uh, you know we have people, you know, you know Greg Porter. He lives 550 miles from me, and you know he had a big hand in this. So I think we're in good shape, and uh, I hope this video didn't bore you to death. But if you are thinking about building an electric car, uh, this is one way to. Uh, to get your drive to your uh, to your transmission and uh, and maybe this video might help somebody uh, or maybe uh, they'll it'll spur them on to come up with uh, new and better ideas which uh, I'm always ready for better ideas so there we go alright guys take it easy thanks for watching we'll have more videos soon